Coming up, let's now evaluate the second one. So um, the integral between t and zero of one on 21, outside of five minus x with respect to x is gonna be one on 21 out the front of that. Um, we know that that becomes five x minus x squared over two and evaluate that between t and zero. Remember, this one is the second part of our piecewise function, so it's the upper the boundary side. Um, going through and evaluating that, we get one on 21 outside of five t minus t squared over two minus five lots of zero minus zero squared over two, which equals one on 21 outside of five t minus t squared over two. So therefore, f of x in this section is just one on 21, five x, whoops, minus x squared over two for values of x that are between, between zero and three. Values of x between zero and three, all right? but it's not quite, all right? Coming back, oh sorry, that, that only works between zero and three. Let's now think about how this whole f of x works. Actually, it's not quite. Remember, we've got two curves. We've got a straight line that is coming up and we have a straight line that's going down. Uh, by, what have we got? five plus x, you have a line going up, and then a line coming down. Um, so what we have when we go through this is that if my t value is in that second part of my piecewise function, if I'm looking for a value in that second part of my piecewise function, um, let's just quickly draw something. Um, what have we got? We've got first part between minus three and zero, is x plus five. So it's gonna be something like this. Um, and then it's gonna be something like that. So what we have, so what we have here is the function that we've got is there's, there's our five plus x between minus three and zero. And there's five minus x between zero and three. If I had some point some point there, t, if that, I was trying to find all the area below that point, I need to put t in here, but I also need to add to it everything from here. So I need to evaluate, I need to know what is the value of this one at its uppermost boundary. I need to know when I put zero in that, that changeover point, what is it? Well, f of zero is gonna equal half. Five times zero, zero. X squared, or well, zero squared, zero. So that's all zero. I have one on 21 times 21 on two, and gives me a value of a half, all right? So if I had to find some point in, in that second part of our piecewise function, I need to add all the area from the first part and whatever I'm going up to for the second part. If I was only in the first part, if I was only in the first part, I only need the value that I'm up to. So this piecewise function, it's f of x, it's actually quite large to write. So f of x is going to equal, well, we need this statement. It's going to equal one on 21 outside of 5x plus x squared on two plus 21 on two. And that's for values of x between minus three, between minus three and zero. It's then gonna equal one on 20, oh, hang on, no. It's then gonna equal half. Remember, half is the value of, of this up until the point zero, the 
area up until the point zero is half. So I want everything up until the border, which was half, plus wherever I'm going up to, what my new upper limit it was. And for that one, I'm using this one, 5x minus x squared on two. And that's for values of x between zero and three. Um, it is zero for values, let me rub this part out now. It was zero for values of x that were less than minus three. And it's gonna be one for values of x that were greater than three. All right, so we're just pausing. All right, guys, so summarizing this, originally we're given the probability density function that had two parts to it. For between minus three and zero, it was the straight line five plus x. For the between zero and three, it was the straight line five minus x. And all the area underneath that, or one on 21 outside front, I'm sorry. All the area underneath that was how we could then go through and find our, our probability density function. Our, our cumulative density function required us adding all of this area together. When we add all of this area together, remember it's from some upper boundary all the way down to its lower boundary. So I need to be able to come up with an expression that if that point there was my upper boundary, how do I, how do I calculate all this area here? And how I calculate that area there is, well, that's only in the first part of our piecewise function. So I integrate only this first part. Now I integrate only that first part between my lower boundary of minus three and the upper boundary of t. And I come up with the expression one on 21 outside of five x plus x squared on two plus 21 on two. And that's how using that expression there, I can find all the area in that first section. If I come up to a different value of t, a different upper boundary, let's say I needed that upper bound, that boundary, well I needed all of the area to the left of it. So I needed all of this. I need to find all of that area. And we can see all of that area was everything from the first function our first part of our piecewise, plus some part, small part of the second. Well, I need everything from here, so my upper boundary became zero, and when I found the area between zero and minus three, it gave me half. So that's where this half comes from. It's all of the area of this function, plus whatever extra little bit I need to, to get me to my upper boundary. So that's what that part there describes, half everything of the area above, plus the parts I need. And remembering once we've got all that area between that part, it's one for everywhere else. Look, I hope that was okay. That one's a bit, a, a kind of complicated one. But I think the thing to break down here is we need to do it in, in the separate parts. Find an expression as if only that first part of the piecewise function existed. There's our expression for the first part. For the second part of the piecewise function, find all of the area in the first part and add it with whatever you need to do to find the area you're looking for in the second part. You were pretty much combining two separate CDFs, two separate parts into one big CDF. Hope that one helps out and explains how to do it when we've got a piecewise function. Again, I was saying it's a very tricky one. Um, you know, it's a complicated one. It's pushing, pushing the boundaries of what we might ask you to do. Hopefully that's okay. Um, and in the next video, will you quickly run through or well, how do we use CDFs?